goodness. What? What are all of you doing? <laughs> okay, okay, I think, I think I'm going to have to start. Considering how many of you <laughs> are out there doing your silly little thing. <laughs> Having my knife out. Which, by the way, I think the most important thing that I should start this stream with is that my beloved wife, Bard, made the most amazing emote of all time. <laughs> Me holding a knife. I think it's incredibly sweet and adorable and very on brand for me. <laughs> but yes, hello. Hello, my sweethearts. Hello, my darlings. Look at all of you. You are all just so precious. <laughs> Welcome, everyone. Goodness. Oh, and also, yes, I'm very happy to see so many of you with the founder badges. You are just too kind to me. Oh, you know how it is, right? I do these streams to talk to all of my sweethearts, and you have me smiling so much now that I can barely find the words. <laughs> but thank you, thank you so much for all of the gifted subs. Electo, you really just popped off there, didn't you? <laughs> oh my god. And there's even, there's, there's a whole hype train and I don't even know what that means. <laughs> You've been waiting for so long. <laughs> well, it's okay. The wait is now over. Because tonight, tonight is the night where I exist, officially. I am yours. I am your sweet mommy. The light in your life. The one that will always be by your side. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much for the hype train. Oh, my darlings. <laughs> Look what you've done. <laughs> choo choo. <laughs> okay. Okay, um, what am I, what am I even doing here tonight? Well, I have something special prepared to you, for you, you know, aside from, <laughs> aside from the usual, right? When we all have a little PowerPoint presentation about our likes and dislikes. <laughs> Iro, Iro, oh, oh my goodness. Hello? Hello, everyone. Oh my gosh. Iro. <laughs> Thank you so much for bringing in all of your blessed raiders. I certainly do feel boba blessed. Yes. Oh my goodness. Welcome in. Yes. Thank you so much, Bard, for giving Iro a shout out. He has been such a wonderful person. I, Iro, honestly, I feel like I've known you for way longer than I have because you've always just been so kind and so lovely. Thank you so much for stopping by and bringing uh, all of your sweet viewers into my antique shop. I really am blessed by your presence today. <laughs> oh, and thank you um, for everyone who, who decided to follow me. Fly Sheep Mutton and Azalea Archivist. Oh, Penny. Hello, welcome and welcome in. Thank you for the follow. <laughs> No, oh, Iro supremacy. Yes, I can definitely get behind that. <laughs> You're just a dude. Well, if you already love Boba so much, then clearly it has to mean something. <laughs> Bev, thank. You. Oh my God, thank you for being here. I'm so happy to see you. And Icky, if I could give you a big hug right now, I would. Oh, okay, okay, um, 
let me just get all my things together because I do have something quite special that I think uh, he will like. Um, so should we just, should we just take it away before I get any more nervous and <laughs> fumble over all of my words? <laughs> Okay, 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 okay. So, what I have prepared for you is my story. And then, I suppose we will elaborate on that, right? Okay, so, fingers crossed that I'm not going to press anything wrong. <laughs> I am not the most skilled at these OBS things just yet. But, here we go. Cool. Of course, I didn't add my mic to this. <laughs> We're fine. We're fine. I added everything, right? Overlay, presentation, um, chat, alerts, except the microphone. <laughs> but that's just part of it, isn't it? Sometimes you just, uh, you're just going to fumble about a little bit. <laughs> Is there supposed to be music? Yes. One of these things is the music. <laughs> Let me find it. I'm pretty sure that I'm just going to forget everything about setting up the scenes. <laughs> but that's fine. That's fine. We got this, right? There it is. Look. Soft music. They wouldn't want to start without it, right? <laughs> yes, and thank you again for the follow. I am Kent. Right. Let's do this. Welcome in to the story of Amber Pine. First of all, we're going to go over something rather special. So everyone, in true Amber fashion, do get cozy, because there's going to be a lot of lore. <laughs> I should also probably put up a pin message. I hope uh, it's going to be okay with you if I focus on this before getting back to you, okay? So, everyone. As the prologue to my story will start now, get cozy, grab a nice blanket, a warm cup of tea, and listen to what I have to say. No, I'm here. 
Now I'm here. <laughs> we just went through this. Imagine that. I'm a professional. There. That's okay. We'll go back. <laughs> Like it never happened. So. What is my story? That is a very good question. I'm not even sure where to start. Because there are a lot of unknowns in my life. But I'll try to start from the beginning. At the least, the beginning. How I remember it. Coming back to my senses after memory loss wasn't a sudden awakening. I was vaguely aware of a few days prior, but they were all blurry and strange. I remember it feeling like walking through fog or a dream, with all my surroundings being out of focus and all my actions working on autopilot. I don't know if I lived in this city, I don't know if anyone around knew me. I don't even know how I survived. But I am certain that I had a life before all this. When my mind cleared for the first time, I stood in front of an old yet unassuming wooden door. I stood there with a large brass key in my hand, ready to unlock it, and I clearly remember my first thought. This is my antique shop. At that time, I wasn't all too certain about what it meant, or even if I could trust that thought at all. It was so crystal clear, though, so firm and somehow grounding. Looking up, and taking in the storefront as a whole, I decided to put my trust in my own mind. For as much as my memory was practically blank at that point, having a single thought like that was reassuring. I admit I was quite frightened at the time, coming back to myself so suddenly in a place that seemed both completely alien and yet strangely familiar. In that moment, the world seemed so big and I felt so exposed. It didn't help that I was standing in the street all alone with no one else around. This absolute stillness on a clear sunny day was somehow even more unsettling, as if the world held its breath in anticipation of something. Before the panic I felt slowly creeping up could take a firm hold of me, I quickly unlocked the shop's door and shut it behind me. Standing inside this old establishment, sparsely lit by the sun rays filtering in from the outside, I couldn't help but marvel. There was so much dust. Every inch of the shop was covered by it like it was shrouded by a faded veil of time. The once vibrant covers of books all looked brown, and any delicate details carved into the numerous cabinets disappeared into obscurity. For a long moment I just stood there, enthralled by the particles swirling lazily in the occasional bright ray of sunshine, winking at me like golden grains of sand. With just one slow wave of my hand, the air currents shifted, sending that comfortable dust fall into a chaotic storm. Some part of me wanted to simply stand there for hours, observing this little dance of dust as it settled back into its comfortable patterns. All this dust must have grown to be a fundamental part of the shop, so what right did I have to disturb it? At this point, all the books and shelves and nooks and crannies were more home to it 
than the shop was to me. As I stood there, I realized that the dust really got into everything. It was in my lungs, it was in my hair, it clung to my clothes, it settled on the tips of my boots as I stood motionless in the entranceway. Speaking quite frankly, the inside of the shop looked like a long-forgotten disaster. I cast my gaze on shelves upon shelves of different sizes, mismatched cabinets, some with glass fronts, others with clearly missing doors or drawers, bookcases of odd proportions. Every inch of every space had something on it. Books were stacked on shelves, shoved into crevices, piled in columns on the floor. I didn't know where to look first. I knew I couldn't figure everything out in one go, but I needed a place to start. Thus, I set out to do the one thing I knew would somehow bring me comfort. Cleaning. <laughs> The shop had a very strange layout as I made my way around it, almost as if every room was a sporadic addition, like an afterthought. The ground floor had three rooms from what I could see, two filled to the brim with books and odd items, and one that served as a break room, fully equipped with a working kitchenette and coffee table. Past the break room was a door to a feeble back garden, as small and dreary as you could imagine. Several planters were, were piled up against the brick wall, moss growing on stone tiles under them. An old wooden staircase, with a beautifully carved handrail, led up from the main store space to the first floor, revealing two more rooms of cabinetry and shelving. Just when I thought I've seen all of it, the shop surprised me with more hidden nooks and alcoves behind a particularly large shelf or cupboard. The third floor was where I found my apartment. The small key to it was conveniently hidden under the doormat, as if waiting for me to discover it. Stepping in with caution, I was greeted with a sense of familiarity. The apartment itself was considerably less filthy than the rest of the antique shop, probably because it has significantly less things lying around to gather dust over, however a long period of time has passed. Somehow, I immediately knew my way around. I suppose what they say is true, that your muscle memory will remember, even if your mind doesn't. All of the usual things one would expect of a home were there. A quaint living room with comfortable seating, a fully equipped kitchen with mismatched mugs, a small bedroom, oh, a small bathroom with a bathtub I knew would feel just too short. My bedroom was the furthest from the front door. Its sturdy door was already left ajar, and when I pushed it open, the space beyond looked familiar, yet I had no conscious memories of it, just like I had no memories of anything. Walking in, I saw a four-poster canopy bed pressed against the wall, still neatly made from what I assumed was the last time I left it. Looking at the deep green velvet bedding, I knew I liked to keep things tidy. My eyes were drawn further into the room, though, towards an archway with a beaded curtain. Through there, I knew lay my study. With a sudden nervousness and a fluttering heart, I held my breath feeling the air around me stand so still you could cut the tension with a knife. My hands trembled just a little as I parted the strings of delicate beads, stepping so lightly 
as if a single noise would somehow shatter the reality around me. The space beyond felt darker, somehow heavier than the rest of the building. Almost as if the weight of the entire world rested on every surface here. The walls were lined with floor-to-ceiling bookcases, their shelves arranged in ways that left space for paintings, pots with once thriving plants, jars filled with oddities and strange artifacts of all shapes and sizes. Standing by the window with just enough daylight to bring its surface to my attention was a rich mahogany writing desk. Cleared of any clutter, the desk held only a single notebook bound in black leather. Could this be my old journal? Curiosity pulled me towards it like a magnet. Stepping around the desk, I reached for it to flip open the cover page, but a sudden noise pierced through the deafening silence. My heart leapt into my throat as I swiftly turned to the side, just in time to see one of the paintings inset into the bookcase, slowly creaking open. There was no reason for this to happen. There was no draft, no movement of the house settling, nothing, just static silence, and yet... The force of something I couldn't explain was beckoning me to approach. My hand came up to rest on my chest, as if I felt some invisible thread there, tethered to my heart and leading to whatever lay beyond that painting. Closing that distance in only a few steps, I fully swung the painting aside to reveal a small space containing an unassuming wooden box. As I took it out carefully and held it in my hands, it had a familiar, well-handled feel to it, and still a subtle scent of pine despite its apparent age. I sat down behind the mahogany desk and laid out the contents of this wooden box. Arranged neatly before me now lay the journal, a small bundle of folded documents inside a passport, an elegant dark blue wallet with a handful of coins, and a single envelope with a deep red wax seal keeping it shut. As I sat there, looking down at the items which would undoubtedly change my life, I felt the air in the house shift as well. Instead of tension and anticipation, I was now surrounded by a gentle sense of relief, maybe comfort, or even encouragement. How such feelings came to be in an abandoned home was beyond me, but at that moment I was willing to attribute it to the strange air quality or poor lighting. There were simply more pressing things that pulled at my attention. Unsure of where to start, I picked up the envelope. It was blank, with no name or indication of who it was intended for, save for the ornate pentagram wax seal. The seal lifted off the paper without needing to be broken, and I was relieved at that. Breaking it in half would have someone felt wrong. From inside the envelope, I took out a letter and a photo. The photo was very clearly a picture of me, and the letter was addressed to Amber Pine. My dear Amber Pine, I leave you with this letter and this life 
in a very dark time, hoping that the person you are now will have the strength to carry our eternal light. I have taken your memory, not out of spite or hatred, but out of hope for the future, believing that you may start anew without the burdens of the world which have weighed down on me and inevitably broken my spirit. I know my words may sound vague and strange, but worry not, for you are not alone. I have left you everything I ever was, in the form of this shop, in my journals. I trust that your power will guide you in finding the answers you need. And if you are ever lost, reach for the magic within yourself. At your core burns the power of connection. With its golden threads, you will always find exactly what you need, even if you yourself don't know it yet. I put my hope and my trust in you, knowing that you will be the one to carry the radiance of the eternal light in your heart, as once I did. After all, who can I trust with this more than myself? Lovingly yours, Amber Pine. P.S. Talk to the house. It gets lonely. Talk to the house? Um, I looked up from the letter with lines of confusion crossing my brow. You're alive? I spoke out loud into the silence for the very first time, and it was as if my words shattered an ancient spell. The space around me practically roared to life, with doors and cabinets opening to let me know I was heard, and lamps blazing to life with an intensity I didn't expect them to have. <laughs> Marveling at the sights around me, I couldn't help but laugh. With a day that started off as nearly a nightmare, for it to turn to such a brilliant dream. Walking back to my bedroom, I placed my hand on the wall in a comforting gesture to my home. Its rattling antics settled down, and I assumed such a display was very costly for it since it only ever displayed small movements ever since. Still holding the letter in my hand, I wondered about the one other important point my past self made. I had the power of connection. Taking a moment to calm my heart and level out my breathing, I closed my eyes. Now, with newly discovered guidance, I reached for a radiant light. And there it was. Pulsing softly with a gentle heartbeat. I reached for it, not asking it to guide me to anything in particular, just wishing to feel it, to see its power. With a rush of energy, my eyes flew open, and around me was a display of light unlike anything I could conjure up in my wildest dreams. Dozens, no hundreds of golden threads in varying thickness and radiance flowed throughout the house like powerful currents, expanding from me as their center. With a familiarity like I couldn't even begin to describe, I knew this power. It was mine. With it came a strange sensation, like electricity flowing under my skin, leaving behind only a slight tingle as I let go of my power, allowing the threads to slowly fade away. I stood motionless in my bedroom for what felt like a very long time. 
Even though I had a thousand thoughts racing through my mind, each one bringing with it dozens of unanswered questions, my heart was calm. In that moment, I felt like I was home. And I knew it was a very long road ahead of me. And that's the end of the prologue. <laughs> so, did you like that? <laughs> I hope, uh, I hope everyone enjoyed themselves. <laughs> A whole ass visual novel? Yeah, 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 yeah. I thought, um... It would be a nice touch. Can we get an encore for the origin story? <laughs> There's going to be more later. You know. Another day. Another month. Because there is a lot. And I do mean a lot more from where this came from. <laughs> and of course... There is no one else I'd rather share it with than you. <laughs> if you're willing to listen, of course. I like to think that the story of Amber Pine will be an interesting one. It will be a journey in itself of discovering who I was and hopefully finding out who I can become. Right. Let's get back to the original presentation. Oh, Tech and Blight, thank you for the, sub the subscription. I'm very happy to see you here. Right. Presentation. This one. <laughs> so, where were we? We had a... Oh, there's my cursor. It's distracting me. Oh. <laughs> we had an entire... Lore reading. But... As with every visual novel, I think we are due for a good lore summary. Right? There's as much mystery as there is magic in my life. And I know that I cannot discover everything about my past. So I look forward to setting out on that journey together with you. <laughs> that much is true, my darlings. But maybe some key points to keep in mind about who I am as Amber Pine. Well, I have uh, simply decided now to call myself the Witch of Connection. <gasps> eh, well, why is that? Well. Um, we saw that my power seems to come from this eternal light I have in my heart. Electo, of course, thank you so much for stopping by. I'm glad you're here even for a moment. Go on, go. And also, anybody who needs to leave at any time, please do so. It must be late at night for some of you, or early in the morning. But yes, what is this strange power of mine that I have? Well, so far from what we know is that I can see the connections between me and important things as golden threads. Or at least that's what I was able to figure out so far, right? Whenever I reach for this power and I ask to show me what I need the most in my life, will guide me to an answer. At least, it does so most of the time. Um, I don't like to rely on it all that much, only when I really am at the end of my rope and would appreciate a little bit of help. What else? Oh yes, my house is sentient. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not sure how I feel about this, having a house that, I suppose, has a life of its own. Because 
What if it's watching me? I sing in the shower. I don't, I don't think anybody needs to be there for that. Especially, um, not my sentient house. <laughs> oh, goodness. Well, right. And what else? Well, I think the one question that stays at the back of my mind is that I wonder, what was it that my past self um, was afraid of or was running from that made her sacrifice everything she worked for? I think that is a very difficult question to ask myself, wondering what it is that made the other me leave everything behind. Because there is quite a lot in this antique shop. Three floors of items, of precious things, of belongings, that she entrusted to me, hoping that I would somehow be better than her, or carry out what she couldn't. I don't know. I really don't know. I hope whatever it is, I will be able to find some sort of answer as to what went on in her mind. Perhaps in one of these journals, because I found several more. There wasn't just the one on the table. There was an entire full shelf documenting year after year, I guess. I always loved journaling. And I will certainly continue to do so. I will continue writing about my life and all the wonderful things that I felt and experienced and all the magic in my life that I want to share with you. <laughs> so I hope you will enjoy my stories because I certainly do like to tell them. Now, who am I? Well, I awakened into your world with no memory of who I used to be, and with a power in my heart that was both familiar and entirely unknown to me. Over time, uh, I guess I discovered that my personality is a dichotomy of concepts. I strive to be kind, gentle, and caring, but on occasion, I do tend to be lewd and situationally murderous. <laughs> As we have seen in some of my streams in the past month. Gosh, has it really been almost a month? <laughs> it certainly has been a couple of weeks that we were able to come together and spend some time together. But, you know, <laughs> exactly only when the situation calls for it. Like Hades, exactly. That's why I have the knife. <laughs> but uh, what are some basic facts about me? Well, I think we all know that my name is Amber Pine, which I think is quite a nice name. I'd like to keep that one. My birthday is on the 10th of October. I like to think it's a 10 out of 10 birthday. <laughs> Makes it uh, easy to remember as well. And it's not something you can get confused no matter in which way you write the date. So, it'll be very straightforward for all of us. Especially for me, because I have no memory for dates. In fact, I, well, I have no memory at all right now. Um, but in general, remembering things is quite difficult for me. So, this will make it easier. <laughs> I'm quite old, at least by some standards. I have to say I feel very young, although the little passport which I found in this box says I am 30. Goodness, hmm. I wouldn't know what a regular 30-year-old person feels like, because I feel quite good, and I feel quite magical and powerful. So, Let's say that is a good age. 
I'm also very tall. <laughs> 180, yes. Um, I suppose I do tower over some of you darlings, but that's okay. It just means I can get um, all of your hugs. I can pick you up. You can come sit in my lap. I will not step on you, Moogie, unless you ask really nicely. Maybe I can make a few exceptions. <laughs> right, Pat Height? <laughs> well. My key trait is, of course, being a soft mommy. <laughs> Just a soft mommy who wants to look after her sweethearts. Yes, Moogie, you do get uppies. Iro, how am I like you? Are we the same height? <laughs> of course, Moogie always get up, gets uppies. I'm always uh, very kind to everyone who stops by. I'm taller? Oh, well, that's all right. I quite like being taller. Let's me look after everyone. My passport also says 30. <laughs> mm -mm. Well, I've heard from a lot of people I wrote that 175 is the ideal height. Just makes you even more perfect. 180 is so tall, damn. Well, yes. We do love a nice tall mommy, don't we? <laughs> oh, yes. And, most importantly... This uh, soft likeness of me that you see on screen was brought to you live by my mama. So do go check them out on Twitter because every time you look at me and think of how soft and gentle and delicate I am, then give a big thanks to my mama. Um, they only speak Japanese, so. You know, but there's always a, you know, the good old Google Translates, right? Which reminds me, shall I show off my full model? Because I have legs. <laughs> Over there on the left, I'm mostly just a floating torso. But there's more to me. Um, so maybe that's something you'd like to see. The full, full full-on large HD amber pine in all her glory. Yeah? Okay, okay. That's all high streamers don't have legs? Well, Moogie, I think I might have to prove you wrong on that one just a little. <gasps> no, we just don't wear pants? Of course. Why would we wear pants? Maybe I'm not wearing pants right now. You'd never know. <laughs> ah, thank you, Caddy Amira, for the follow. Okay, okay, so, look, 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 there's my soft, soft white face, so pale, so fair, and yes, I suppose my slightly unsettling feature would be my Completely white pupils with a simple band of gold wrapped around on the inside. Oh, thank you, Ivan. <laughs> thank you for the follow. You're very sweet. So, yeah, that's my face. So gentle, always happy to give you a smile. Just a soft mommy, with, uh, of course, my light brown hair fading into white. I do suppose I am getting quite old, but I love that part of me as well. And then we carry on. There's the incredibly important 
parts that make a good mommy, right? <laughs> the mommy milkers. Anyway. <laughs> Let me just wiggle that for you. <laughs> but in any case, there's my soft, soft, gentle hands. The ones that are always here to hold you. The hand that will always be out there. Um, to give you a reassuring embrace. The arms that you can always run into. And then, of course, Mommy's lap. The one that I want you to sit in and be comfortable in. Followed by the huge mommy hips that keep knocking everything over in the antique shop as I walk by. This is a true story. I suffer greatly. And if you thought you wanted to see legs, well, they shall be covered <laughs> by my incredibly large and long skirt that just keeps going. And it's just going, and it's just going. <laughs> because I am very tall. But I do have legs. Look, look. I've got little booties. Of course streamers have legs. Clearly, clearly these are my legs. They are definitely very leggy. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Very modest, very nice. Very good legs for stepping on people, if they ask. And now we go back past the oceans of skirt. Oh, oh takes a while. <laughs> back to the top. Past everyone's favorite lace top. I do love this top. It's one of my favorites. To your soft mommy's face. <laughs> so yes, that was my full model. I am very fond of it. I think it's rather nice. <laughs> so, moving on. I want you to know that we are here for each other. Because my goal as a VTuber is to bring warmth and comfort into all of your lives. I really do value everyone who comes by here, whether you're here to relax, fall asleep, or talk to me and chat. I love all of my lurkers, and all of my regulars, and everybody who subscribed, or just wants to keep me in the background, as something to do your daily chores to. I really hope that we can make many pleasant memories together. And I do have some goals that I'd like to set out for myself, Things that I would like to accomplish. Things that I would like to bring you. Oh, Moogie. It'll be a little while. Hang in there. I do love to do my script writing. I done. I have done a couple of them until now. Um, sort of early in, early in December, I think. And I would certainly like to continue doing that, because I think it is quite wonderful. Whenever I hear fellow VTubers reading a nice little encouraging script of text they send to all of their darlings, because someone out there might be having a rough day and would really appreciate a little bit of encouragement. So that's a... Uh, what I would like to do, write several of these, or at least, you know, once per month. <laughs> I would also really like to write these visual style stories for my friends to voice, just like my story, which, which, um, which you saw today. I'd like to do this for other people as well, because I find it quite captivating to listen to someone else's story and try to capture it in words 
with my own magic twist. I am working on some things right now, although it is taking a lot of time. <laughs> but that's just how it is with writing, isn't it? If it's magic, then it might take a little bit more time. And also, if I'm not writing things myself, I would still love to read stories for you to relax and fall asleep to. So, um, remember, occasionally, maybe once every other week, I would like to do a story reading stream just for us to enjoy a very comfy and chill time. And for those, I would actually even put the VODs up on YouTube so that they can live their own life there for as long as you need them. <laughs> but Amber, you are magic. Oh, Sam. Sammy, you are just so sweet. Discord sleep reading sessions when? When I set up the Discord. Well, the Discord is mostly set up, to be honest. I just need to put in the correct permissions and a couple of bots and you know how it is one thing at a time right <laughs> it's coming it's coming soon see exactly it's right there in the next bullet point <laughs> because i would really like to make a cozy place for all of us to spend time together listen i haven't even started you are more ahead of me well You'll get there. Maybe we'll just get there together. It'll be fine. So, everyone, stay tuned. I will be making a Discord server. It's just uh, taking a little bit of time, but that's fine. That's entirely fine. <laughs> and similarly, I am planning on opening a Minecraft server because i am hopelessly addicted to minecraft <laughs> i think that one i will use for my own pleasure of building and storytelling in a different way making um little adventure maps for people to play through and just uh having a fun time with all of my friends yes I do like to set up my Minecraft servers in very specific ways with a little quality of life improvements, but mostly it'll just be vanilla. So, with um, the world's best plugin sitting on top of other people. <laughs> now, what else is there? I do have some hobbies and interests if you'd like to know more about me. I certainly have a wide array of things I enjoy, though our time spent together is what's most precious to me. <laughs> yeah, that's certainly one thing I'd like to know. I'd like to hear what your passions are and see the magic in them. Uh, otherwise, I don't really have a concrete list of things I enjoy. Rather, I think I prefer trying new things. Within reason, mind you. I know I still have my preferences, but that usually is the joy of life, isn't it? You tell me about something you truly love, and you inspire me to try it out as well. And who knows, in the end, I might like it. Though, so far, I do have um, some things I am um, particularly fond of, like witchcraft. Yes, let's go. Seances and rituals in the woods. Goodness. Although, you know, I also like the more regular variety, like drow like drying um, flowers and herbs, uh, simply because it's such a pleasure to grow my own um, little garden, tell all of my little flowers, how much I love them and how much I care for them and then have them serve me in cooking and in making tea because some flowers 
make excellent tea, like dried lavender for a nice evening brew, or warm calendula. Oh, that is a very nice tea. I'm sure you might have some things that you particularly enjoy like that, right? Mm, the occult is fascinating indeed, KK. Ants on acid. Hi. Welcome. Mikey. I'm so happy to see you. Welcome in, welcome in. Yes. We are just going through, um... You are fashionably light. <laughs> I went through my entire lore story, and now we're just uh, having a pleasant time going through some of my interests. No, that's quite okay. I'm just happy to see that you are here. What else do I enjoy? Collecting shiny rocks? Yes. Genuinely, it doesn't even have to be crystals. It can be purely shiny rocks. If it's sparkly, I will love it. Doesn't matter whether it's the most expensive amethyst geode you've seen or a fragment of a broken glass bottle. I will think both are beautiful. <laughs> and I am very likely to take up both and put them on a shelf in my house where it will go next to all the other rocks I have collected throughout my life. <laughs> So maybe if you ever stop by my house, I will show you my shiny rock collection. <laughs> Some of them I do like to incorporate into my spells and my magic. And maybe craft into pendants or spell jars to give to the people who need them. Or the people who would like a little piece of me to carry with them. There are loads of shiny rocks in the ocean. I can grab you some from the deepest depths. Oh, Samuel, that would be so sweet of you. I would treasure it dearly. <laughs> well, I would treasure it mostly because it came from you. But also because it's from the ocean. And I think the ocean is quite beautiful. Um, And naturally, because I own uh, an antique shop, I love old books and ancient tomes. The older and stranger, the better. Especially the ones that are unique or have been uh, out of publishing for a very long time. I must say that I do enjoy going on um, specific trips or little journeys of my own to find things that I could get from my collection or things that would give me more of a clue as to who I was before. And of course I love crime, but don't think about that too much, okay? There's a reason I have a knife. Now, there's this thing that I find quite magical. And it is various media. I've discovered that I am uh, not very good at fast-paced games, but that is not going to stop me from trying. <laughs> crimes against humanity or war crimes? Mikey. Or am I more into petty crimes? Well, there's only one way to find out. Why don't you stick around? <laughs> Amber Pine is secretly a crime boss? Fairview. That would be a plot twist, wouldn't it? <laughs> Let's do crimes together. Exactly. The more the merrier. And sharing is caring after all. <laughs> Especially when you get to share the joy of murder. Oh, but I go on a tangent. Back to this slide. Um... In terms of games that I will also be playing on my channel here, uh, my preference will always be with uh, soft and comfy games. You know, something to relax to and something to chat to because I do like having you around and it's a lot more fun that way. We support murder in this club 
Exactly, KK. Your feelings are valid, and murder is okay. <laughs> That's what I like to say, at least. Um, and aside from games, in terms of movies, I've seen quite a lot of movies. I think. Um, but I cannot for the life of me remember most of them. Um, that's unfortunate. But I try, okay? I try to recall at least some of them. But, um, that makes, um, movie night with me, uh, even more exciting. Because I simply just don't remember anything I've watched. So it's like I'm seeing it again for the first time. <laughs> Coffee cold. Coffee Cold, thank you so much for the follow. Welcome, welcome. Do get cozy. Now, what are some of the games that I enjoy playing? Well, I think you uh, would probably expect this of me. I do love myself the good Stardew Valley and the Minecrafts. And recently I have become hopelessly addicted to Core Keeper. That game is such a blessing. I genuinely tell everyone I meet that they must play Core Keeper. Ideally with me. <laughs> because you can get up to eight of your friends into their multiplayer worlds and uh, have a fun time exploring. But yes, these are generally the kind of uh, games that I like to play the most. Just uh, something soft and gentle. Thank you. Lippa, for, uh, for stopping by. And we should play again sometimes. Oh, yes. That would be quite lovely. It's been a while, hasn't it? <laughs> mm, what else is there? I do certainly enjoy games such as Hades and Cult of the Lamb. Or the murder. I love murder. I love crime. I do love to just... Wield a knife, or a sword, or anything pointy, especially a spear. A spear is my favorite weapon. It just has such a long and firm shaft for me to hold on to and just, um, y you know, Hades, right? We're talking about weapons? Uh-huh, yes, exactly. But, uh, Cult of the Lamb as well. I think that would be quite something to enjoy on stream with you, my darlings. Um because isn't it just so much fun to start a cult and hold uh, sacrifices together? <laughs> I think uh, that does bring a group of friends together, doesn't it? A nice bonfire, a nice uh, sacrifice every once in a while. <laughs> really strengthens a friendship. Oh, I am also one of those people who is uh, hopelessly addicted to Mm, the waifu games. Like the, um, Honkai and the Genshin. I have been playing Genshin essentially since the start of it. Although, at some point, it was just too much. So, I'm now trying very hard to catch up to all the quests. So that I can at least play it on stream when, uh, our future amazing husband comes along. I'll hate them. I'm waiting, okay? I'm really waiting. Saving all of my primos. Remembering to at least play Genshin like once every seven days. <laughs> I'm doing a very poor job at it because I just never remember. Oh, but the uh, Honkai, I would say, is quite a special game in my heart. I care about it a lot. The plot really is something else. It is certainly a confusing and complicated um, mobile game to get into, but I think it's worth it. And aside from that, I am absolutely waiting for Honkai Star Rail to be out. I want to play it. Please give it to me. Though another one of these uh, gacha games that I enjoy is Punishing Grey Raven. That one is really good. I feel like it really has the kind of aesthetic that I enjoy a lot. Now, moving pictures. <laughs> oh, but uh, before that, 
there of you do you think I would enjoy playing Doom 2016 or Eternal? <laughs> Can you imagine that? Just the uh, me playing Doom in a very um very soft voice. Just gore everywhere at me saying, Oh dear, perhaps you shouldn't do that. That hurt my feelings quite a lot. <laughs> ah yes, more people will need to know about punishing Grey Raven. Exactly, KK, exactly. It is such a good game. All things considered. Really fits um, the kind of aesthetic that I like as well. Now, about these movies. So, here's the thing. It took me a while to realize that I do like movies, but mostly for their visual effects, and for their strange fuckery. Hence why you see movies such as Inception and Interstellar and Tenet, and especially Doctor Strange, because Doctor Strange, that movie, oh my goodness, it has such a beautiful use of magic and reality warping effects. I love it very much. Now, I listed Cloud Atlas as the very first one because... I think I would say it really is my favorite movie of all time as it deals with the topics of reincarnation of souls who are destined to always meet again in their next lives. It was very beautiful and also sad in parts, and I do like to rewatch it quite frequently. It's very good. Hopefully we can watch it together sometimes. And of course, then I do like my fun movies like Knives Out and Kingsman and so on. I'm sure there are a lot of other movies that I've enjoyed in the past. Like, um, I've, you know, I've uh, sat down to watch things like Spider-Man with people and um, other Marvel movies and other things out there. So if there are any particular movies that you enjoy, I'd like to hear about them. I'd like to give them a try. Or maybe we can even have movie nights over in my Discord. Once I set that up, I promise I'm working on it. We're getting close. <laughs> uh, oh yes, in terms of uh, the more anime and animated style, I fucking love Gundam. I just want to make that explicitly clear that Gundam is a fundamental part of me as a person. I really enjoy it. I really hope I will keep finding the time to watch Gundam uh, Witch from Mercury. Yes. Oh yes, Mikey. I am really glad to hear that you found the time to watch it because... It is very pleasant and very fun. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Did I hear Gundam? Yes, Ara. Yes, I'm talking about how much I love Gundam. Um, although maybe to give people a better idea, the kind of uh, shows that I like are definitely Gundam Seed. That one has a special place in my heart since it was the very first one I saw. Uh, it's not perfect or maybe the most representative as it comes to Gundam, but... For me, it was special, and it always will be. Um, and then the other one that I really enjoyed was Gundam Double O. That one was quite fun. So if you want to get into Gundam, either go for Witch from Mercury, because that's the most recent one. Or, yeah, sure, why not? Gundam Double O. That one was very fun. You have 2.2k worth of Gundam in a cart? Yes, Ura, that's exactly how this addiction tends to go. I am not looking at my perfect grade Gundam model kit behind me or anything, which I still need to put together. Goodness. Maybe, maybe if I figure out how, we could even do a uh, Gunpla building stream where I struggle together, struggle to put together pieces of such a fun little uh, plastic mech, right? See? Yes, Ura, you know exactly what I have on my mind, and usually it's uh, 
Gundam. So in your antique shop, there's a section dedicated to Gunpla. Got it. <laughs> that would probably just be up in my apartment, hidden somewhere out of view, so that people don't see how much of a giant weeb I really am. <laughs> just my huge collection of Gunpla. Oh my goodness. What else? Oh, for any of our old people in chat, like me, some of the very early anime that I love very much was, of course, Kamikaze Kai Tojan. That one aired in 1999. So, um, maybe you weren't around to see it. <laughs> but that's okay, that's okay. It was a very beautiful anime. I loved it very much. <laughs> You're giving us spoilers like that? Whoa. I also really loved Kaleido Star. That one really had a Cirque du Soleil vibe for me. And I simply enjoyed seeing the story of Sora as she went about her life experiencing these magical adventures in a circus. And the performances were always very touching and moving and visually stunning. I loved everything about that. God, I would really be happy if Kaleido Star got a remake because my heart would be so happy, honestly. What else is there? Um, maybe from the more recent ones, an anime that I truly enjoyed was Guren Lagan. Um, and. The other one that was maybe slightly stranger was Ergo Proxy. Ooh, we love Gundam. Iroh, yes. Yes. In this house, we will always stan Gundam. And, of course, Guren Lagan as well. I think uh, I really binge-watched that anime. And it was very moving to me with uh, how dedicated... To their dreams and their goals all the characters were hmm uh, i feel like i should rewatch that one it was very important to me at the time ergo proxy as well that one was uh, a bit of a mind fuck but i think uh, that's what i enjoy about a good anime if it doesn't leave you slightly confused then was it even good <laughs> and then Maybe trying to go for even more recent things. Um, on the shorter side of animes, I really, really enjoyed Death Parade. That one was very good. Certainly had some interesting questions brought up. And had me thinking about a lot of stuff. Was incredibly well animated. And then the other one that was just such a treat was Motakoi. And honestly... <laughs> I feel like I've never related to a character as much as I have to the, the green-haired lady whose name I forget, as I forget the names of every single character ever. <laughs> oh my god. Death Parade is really nice, yes. Iro, <laughs> You really think I'm fitting for it? Okay. <laughs> I'll take it, I'll take it was very fun to watch, so I would recommend those uh, to everyone. I've never had a waifu other than her. Well, Iroh, looks like I'm just the next best thing, huh? <laughs> Kingsman is Teller. Oh yes, that movie was really good. Visual uh, effects and all. Just, hey, Amber. Yes, Bart? What is it? You got me a flower? Oh. Sweetheart. You are so precious. Thank you so much. I love that from you. Always. Your leagues about beautiful Iroh on main like that? Sheesh. You'll make me blush in my very own debut stream. Do go on. <laughs> oh. Obsidian. Sweetheart. Hello! Hello, welcome, and thank you for the biddies! My goodness! 
Ah, oh, thank you on the congratulations, Obsidian. You are just too sweet. I'm very happy to see you here. Coffee cold. Oh, hi. Hi. <laughs> oh, how sweet everyone is being today. I'm very grateful to see all of you come celebrate with me. <laughs> Even if, honestly, we are just having a chill and quiet time after a little bit of storytelling. But I'm glad you're able to enjoy and uh, celebrate with me a little bit. Now, what's next? Oh yes, the quite standard likes and dislikes. I think um, this one will be very indicative of me as a person. But first, I should probably um, drink my tea. Just so that my voice doesn't abandon me. <laughs> We've only really been here an hour and a half. Yeah. And there we go. Don't forget to also stay well hydrated, everyone, my sweethearts. Get yourself a nice cup of tea. Or some good water. Or anything like that, really. Oh yeah, Coffee Cold. You need to change your name back to Tea Cold. Yes, I was wondering about that. I was like, is that a friend? Oh. <laughs> now, what do I like? Shiny stuff. Um, shiny things. Rocks. Sparklies. Um, sparklers. That little sparkle in your eyes as you're about to commit murder. I like that too. <laughs> the reflections of sunlight in the surface of a lake. That's very shiny as well. <laughs> I love pineapples. So here's the thing. I really, really love pineapples. I don't know how to explain that to you, but I own so many pineapple themed items. Genuinely. My house is just full of pineapples. Oh, thank you for the follow. Ganfair Ace. Welcome, welcome. Get cozy. Stay here with your soft mommy. I'm sure I'll uh, make your time with us comfortable. <laughs> but anyway, back to the pineapples. Um, I'm wearing a uh, pineapple shirts whenever you know i'm at home getting cozy i have pineapple socks um i'm still in the progress of getting pineapple bed sheets but that's coming pineapple pillows absolutely will happen everything pineapple themed i love that stuff i have pineapple earrings i i have just like I just, oh god, I have so many pineapple things. I'm pretty sure I even have pineapple lights somewhere. I have a giant inflatable pineapple that my mom got for my birthday. <laughs> it's uh, very funny. Pineapple on pizza is entirely valid. And if you don't like it, just give it to me. <laughs> we have pineapple lights. Yeah, that's that's funny. I love that stuff. Do you have a mug in the shape of a pineapple? Yes, because one of my most important friends gifted it to me in real life. It is the most exquisite pineapple metal goblet you have ever seen. It's unbelievable how amazing that pineapple mug is. I love it. It's so precious that half of the time I'm afraid to drink from it. Pineapple glasses? No, no, no. My glasses are just regular. Maybe I could get those pineapple um, sunglasses for partying. Although I might even get a pineapple print Hawaiian shirt, you know. I think that would be quite funny. <laughs> but I have several mugs with a pineapple print on them. And I have to try very hard to stop myself from getting more. 
and the pineapples are also the reason why um, my username used to be Pineapple Perv, because I was just very passionate about pineapples. <laughs> Probably an unhealthy amount. How about I just 3D print you a pineapple? Sam, if you have a 3D printer and you wish to 3D print me a pineapple, I will accept it with my whole heart. If, if it's anything and it has pineapples on it, I'll be so happy. <laughs> it doesn't even matter what it is. If you come up to me and draw a pineapple in pen right on the back of my hand, I will be super, super pleased with it. <laughs> What, you have a 3D printer but don't use it much? Well, I can think of several suggestions. I'll let you know later. <laughs> or maybe I can just let you know now because it has something to do with tentacles. <laughs> Why is this one of the things that I like? Well, you see, um, tentacles are just very good in a salad. So, you know. Um, uh, just a, a good old, good old uh, sea dish, you know, a nice, uh, a nice salad with a grilled uh, tentacle. <laughs> That's exactly what I mean, for sure. Mr. Sam S. Kraken can elaborate, or actually don't, don't say anything. <laughs> you can spell pineapple without pine. Amber, huh? <laughs> yes. Yes, I mean, that's very much how I came about my name, right? Is I thought, well, maybe Pineapple Perv is a little out there, so I'll keep the pine part of it. And Amber just has such a nice ring to it, doesn't it? Uh, yes. The other thing that I really, really love is boba tea. So if, uh... If you ever hang out with me in real life, if you ever stop by the antique shop, then we should go for a nice full cup of boba tea. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Preferably the sweet milky kind with tapioca. Oh, I do love that. I think my favorite, um, my favorite type would be milky jasmine. Yes, that one is incredibly pleasant. Or if I go for a fruity kind of tea, especially in summer, then my favorite would be black tea with peach. Yeah, I quite like that. Or um, black tea with pineapple. Or even green tea with pineapple. Those are all very good combinations. Yes, nothing else suspicious about boba tea at all. I also really like women. <laughs> I just wanted to put that out there for all of the beautiful women enjoyers. I see you. Mommy's here for you. Women good. Exactly, exactly, Bard. And uh, speaking of the things that I like the most is my wife bard. There she is. There she is in chat. That's my bard. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Time to embarrass bard a little bit because how could I not, right? <laughs> there are several things that I don't like as much. So, I really, really don't like mushrooms, okay? So, please. If you see mushrooms, keep them away from me. I don't want to eat them. <laughs> I'm so happy so many of you can relate to liking women. <laughs> and agreeing that you hate mushrooms. That I feel like those are the two most relatable points in my entire personality. Likes women, hates mushroom. <laughs> uh. That's very, very funny. <laughs> at least to me it is. I tend to laugh at the silliest of things, though. So, 
<laughs> women and mushrooms. <laughs> what if we hate women but like mushrooms? Well, I sure hope you don't hate women. Um, but, you know, to each their own. I also don't really like meat. I have to say, I prefer all of my dishes vegetarian. Save for, you know, sometimes sausage is okay. <laughs> but otherwise, no steak, thank you. None of that. Um, <laughs> so anyway, uh, the other things that I'm not particularly fond of is excessive sarcasm. Unless you put slash s at the end, in which case we're all good. Simply because I won't understand it. <laughs> I don't have um, a lot of sarcasm detection installed into my brain, so go easy on me, okay? <laughs> I will simply take people at face value. Hello, Harachi. Welcome in, welcome in. I'm happy to see you. Thank you for the follow. Pine is too old for sarcasm. Yes. Yes, T. Cold, you are probably entirely right. I am just a soft, tired mommy. So please be straightforward with me. I don't understand these things, okay? Like, for example, the other day, I was explained to what goaded means, finally, and today I had to ask, what the hell does capped mean? Okay, that's how my life is. I just don't understand this. Samuel, Samuel, what are you clipping? <laughs> are you, oh my God. <laughs> are you clipping me saying that sometimes sausage is okay? Oh my God. Okay, well, thank you for... The broad embarrassment i really appreciate it <laughs> Ura, can you please explain to me what that sentence is amber for real quirked up and goated with the sauce why with the sauce what kind of sauce is this some kind of special sauce am i supposed to know what sauce you are using i i wouldn't know amber on a scale of one to johnny sins how much riz do you have um, Ura, uh, hello, subtitles, please. Listen, the other day, you only told me about Riz because you said that it's what Dice has, and I was still confused. <laughs> Johnny sends a real one. Pamela, not you too. Come on now. Yesterday, you asked what the difference between emoji emotes and emote icons were. <laughs> well, yes. Because that's just how I am as a person. A little clueless and a little confused. <laughs> Bullying Amber with online lingo. LOL. You mean lots of love, KK? Aw, oh, thank you. You are too kind. <laughs> are we not going to talk about the balls in your mouth? No. So anyway. <laughs> <laughs> got all the ratch on the wrist dice what does that mean what does that mean <laughs> sam what are you doing there with the raffle roar xd uwu owa owa <laughs> i am moving on i am moving on from this right now i think we've had enough of fun okay <laughs> i really hate elevators No, 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 no. I don't, I don't want to go into any elevators, please. I love, I love huge, tall, shiny glass buildings. But if you put me into an elevator in one of them, I will be pretty sad. Also, you know, very tough working in corporate if that's where you have to be every single day of your life. Uh, but the other relatable things that I dislike is spiders because fuck them. Ugh. If I see one of these creepy bastards crawling around, I'm going to have to call upon one of you to very gently and politely dispatch spiders away from my vicinity, okay? 
oh my god Ura, i see you typing in there and my my brain is already stopping oh my god okay i'll try to i'll try to give this my best so my takeaway from this is you're a quirked up riz lord who's goated with the sauce and you got that ranch on the Ura, respectfully i want you to print that out and provide me with a google translation then mail it to me to my actual physical address and i will frame it and hang it above my bed okay <laughs> starting point guard from the washington wizards t cult what does that mean <laughs> roar that means i love you and dinosaur oh my fucking god you deserve a veteran's discount <laughs> Oh, goodness. The Wizard of Oz? <laughs> for real, for real. <laughs> My, Mikey, what? That's actually really funny. Um, <laughs> I appreciate it. Then what else? Okay, there, honestly, there are a lot more things on the list, but I think we should just find out the good old way by spending time together, right? I'm sure there will be many more things that pop up that I realized are either my likes or my dislikes, and I will be very vocal about them. The girl who cried Riz. Charlie and the Riz factory. Oh my god. <laughs> Guys, don't scare mom with the Gen Z lingo. Exactly. Thank you. I'm already just a little frightened, but I am absolutely, as they say, vibing with it. <laughs> I am down with the cool kids. How do you do, fellow kids? <laughs> Please help me. But anyway, I, in this presentation, wanted to express my love and thanks, okay? So everyone, everyone, let's get together for the proper acknowledgements of everyone who helped me get to where I am right now because that is as much of an important part as anything else yes so I really want to say that my biggest thank you goes out to all of you all of you sweeties in chat all of my darlings lurking Everyone who's listening to my voice and who takes time out of their day to be here with me. I know that I wouldn't be here without the support of my friends and everyone that I met along the way who believed in me. And especially those of you who came to all of my streams until now. I do treasure every kind soul I meet along the way and keep you close to my heart. And you know, I'm going to just start naming people, you know. I'm going to just call all of you out. I see so many of you in chat. Fairview, for example, and T Cult, and Ants on Acid. Uh, you are the ones that I think remember me from quite a way back, back when I was part of a Sierra's community. Um, that really was sort of my very first. Uh, look into the vtuber life seeing uh how many wonderful people can come together in ways like that i was super happy to meet all of you and now i am super happy to see you here in my debut stream you are very big sweethearts so thank you and then who else is here i mean obviously ura and Mugi. Um, you two have been my sweet companions in Dice's Void Discord for as long as I can remember now. So, I hold you close to my heart. Dice said he won't type, so I'm typing this for him. Oh, goodness. Sighted? Yes, it's me, it's Amber Pine. Welcome, come on in. Hmm. I remember hearing your lovely voice for the first time in VC and being stunned. Fairview, you are always being so kind. <laughs> I'm very happy to have you here. Ah, but 
yeah, there are so many of you. For example, also, Sam, Mr. Kraken, the most sweetest and appreciative person I've had the pleasure of meeting. You have been such a bright light in my life, always offering kind words of friendship. I'm very grateful to have you here and be supportive of all of the silly things that I do. And also introducing me to Myra because, my God, the two of you together, just, I am weak in the knees. So thank you so much for your support, right? And just being by my side, it really does mean a lot to me. Especially in days when sometimes we feel like we don't have all that many uh, friends, right? Mm. And also, I have to mention people who I met through being a VTuber, like everyone in Sin's Discord, which is, goodness, who even is there? Electo, Iro, Icky. All of you sweethearts, Beb as well, and so many names that I'm slowly getting to learn. Uh, and then, of course, the people who are always in my chat, like LJ, who has been such a lovely presence, who I always feel like I can rely on when I would like to have a nice chat. So LJ, I always see you. And I always appreciate you. That's you, exactly. That's you, and you are most certainly one of my biggest sweethearts. And I'm not forgetting about you either, Egg. I see you lurking, <laughs> being cute, always coming in here, looking for mommy's milkers. It'll always be here. My lap is always going to be open, and my embrace is always going to be waiting for you. And Mikey, don't think I'm going to forget about you either. <laughs> you with your immaculate vibes, always being such a nice presence. Thank you for being here for me as well. Oh goodness, I could really just sit here and name all of my sweet friends. Just like I could list off everyone who I knew before being a VTuber. Everyone from Amber's after party, like Shoddy and Innie and Eerie and Pam and Ray and my good friends who I talked to about VTubers even before I became one. My friends who were always there for me. Hmm. <laughs> Glad to have met you. Let's make even more memories this year. Yes. I sure hope so. But, but, there are some people that I would like to thank specifically. And there are people which I also want everyone in chat to thank from the bottom of their heart. Because I know that as a VTuber, as a content creator, and even as a kind person, I wouldn't be here without someone very specific. And that is, of course, Dice. <laughs> so, why do I want to call you out, Dice? Well, <laughs> you are the one who showed me that even a few words of kindness to a stranger on the internet can really go a long way and here we are right now because for everyone I found Dice's stream very randomly and he was the person to offer me help in becoming a VTuber and he was so kind and so caring and honestly for as much as how you say that you're just a sad boy edgelord. You have such a big heart. And I will forever be grateful for you. 
So thank you for everything you've done for me. And everybody, give a big thanks to Dice because I genuinely wouldn't be here right now if it wasn't for him, okay? He was the one that let me into his void discord and that's how I uh, got to be here today with all of you. <laughs> mm -mm, exactly. And because of this man, I met the brightest light in my life. <laughs> Bard! Bard, sweetheart! It's you! You really have become the most important pillar of support for me. Because, my sweet Bard, everyone knows how much I love you and how much I care about you. You were there for my very first stream and that's what matters the most and you were there for me no matter what through the thick and thin through the good days and the bad days and through all of the silly shenanigans yes bard that's right everyone in here knows how much i care about you so <laughs> Thank you for being by my side. <laughs> you really deserve the whole world. And I hope that we'll spend a lot more time together. Because Bard and Dice are both going to be very important parts to the story of Amber Pine. <laughs> we'll find out more in my lore readings later on, so... Stay tuned. And yes, everyone, please do give all of your love to my sweetest bard who is here with me even right now. <laughs> Thank you, my darlings. I know that I wouldn't be here without you. Oh. And that's it, I think. <laughs> I think we're done. My goodness. I think we made it through my whole presentation. So thank you for being here. And remember that my eternal light will be with you always. <laughs> Even though usually that's what I end my stream on, there's more for us to do. Because would it even be a proper debut stream if I didn't get... Some of my friends in here and for us to play some silly game together <laughs> of course it wouldn't be i have more plans i am going to be playing phasmophobia because there is nothing quite like torturing yourself late in the night with some horror games <laughs> oh. So, thank you everyone for coming to my story reading and my little PowerPoint presentation as well. <laughs> I hope you found it enjoyable or at least somewhat entertaining. <laughs> so now, um, how should I do this? Oh, I think I'm going to mm, take a little break. Maybe just five minutes so that I can set up the other stuff and then uh, come back for some Phasmo. I hope that sounds good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everyone go grab something to drink and have a little snack. And then oh, in five minutes, I think we will reconvene, okay? And thank you for coming if you need to head off. It has been super fun. I am very fortunate to have all of you by my side. So, be back soon. <laughs>